mean, when you talk about diet culture, because I'm fascinated by this, and I think I'm going to have an aha moment when you talk about this. So I want you to explain, explain this to me. When you say diet culture, because in my mind, because also think about the listeners. Some people are going to think just like I did. They're going to think well, I'm talking about actual diets, but mm-hmm. you're not. What are you talking about? I think it's really comprehensive in that way. Cause I do think there are some of us when, um, you know, when Alyssa's talking about like these diet veterans, these are people who have had ingrained in them that a diet is got, that, you know, and somehow losing a, the weight on a diet is going <clears> to <throat> solve problems. Um, that the solution to what they're looking for in that spiritual hole is in a diet and diet culture is actually, you know, this multi-billion dollar industry created to keep us in it. Right. So there's largely never going to be a diet you're going to find that's actually going to solve the problem. So it it starts with food, but it's pandemic because it moves into what you look like. And then if they can't get you on the food, they're going to get you on the belly fat. And if they can't get you on the belly fat, they're going to get you on the orthorexia of it. What are you doing to your body? And if they can't get in the orthorexia of it, they're going to get you on the health part of it. You should start counting macros because that is good for your muscle. There, there is no place in which, and listen, when we're talking about false idols, right? When we're talking about obsessions, right? When we're talking about this unhealthy, I mean, in our culture, it's like basically healthy in many ways, right? But I think there's a couple of things I just, I want to say about it when you're entrenched in it. Mm -hmm. Because I'm actually, this is my second book is about this. And and I'm entrenched in my second book right now. So I'm just entrenched in talking about diet culture. So for people who bought into diet culture, were taught that diet culture was going to solve their problems. You know, they, it's really an addiction. And it like, it like, really is because addiction's core value is intermittent reinforcement, right? Like getting that high, scoring that high and diets do that for you. You get this big weight loss, you're waiting for it. You're being sold it. you do what you do. And what ends up happening with all addictions is that intermittent reinforcement gets less and less. And it turns into what's called learned helplessness, right? Mm-hmm. Which is this belief that you can't get while you're dead on the floor. I mean, we've all treated that person, right? Even you've seen them in the rooms, right? Like I can't get well, forget it. I can't do it. I can't do it. That's called learned helplessness. It's a trauma response. It's a trauma response. I had the most interesting, I did a workshop yesterday. We do workshops once a month on divorcing dieting. And I kind of bring my new material in. And there was a woman in there who I've actually been in my community a really long time. And she, she, she's in such learned helplessness that she knows that she has a really unhealthy relationship with sugar, but she as she would say, like, won't do anything about it. Mm-hmm. I would argue can't do anything about it because it's such a tremendous trauma response. And I suggested to her, do you think that this is actually diet trauma and not actually that you can't do this, but that actually you have become so accustomed to, you know, procrastination and perfectionism are such fear responses, right? They're, they're such, they, you don't want to feel that way again. So you'll just avoid it at all costs. And I said, do you think that she said, I, I, she's like, I came to this workshop today because I wanted to hang out with you. And I was like, curious about what you're doing. She said, in my lifetime, I never would have attributed this to this constant going on diets that I can't get well. And she just had this big aha moment. So I think the thing about diet culture is like, it's, it's entrenched. It's, I would even argue if you really dug deep that you could find a part of you you wearing lipstick as a part of diet culture in its own way. Probably not you, Anna. You're probably like, I do what I want. I love myself. But like most of us, <laughs> like no. my, like my triple like <laughs> necklace is a function of diet culture. If you ask me, like, it's good. You guys might like me more. Like, you know what I, it's well, now like, that you you're really want it, it, I have tons of diets. I, I can do, now that you're explaining it, I'm like, oh I my mean, God. I, my head like, almost fell off. Cause then I, I just like, then by the way, I was about to like hire you as my therapist. I mean that this whole thing was going to become so transactional. Now, I have a huge list now. Okay. And, and, and for the next 24 hours, this is what I'm going to tell you. That's a diet culture. That's a, I have tons but it, of- That's how entrenched it is. I mean, it's so entrenched yeah. that we don't even think we have a problem. I mean, it, and it, and this is what I said yesterday about it, because, you know, I really do always make this alignment with abusive relationships with sugar, people in a relationship with sugar and flour, if, if, if they fit their criteria, not everybody, please, please, please don't hear it. Um, but I said, you know, the interesting thing about being in an abusive relationship with diet culture and making the analogy to it being like an abusive relationship with a person is that it is, it is an inaccurate analogy because it's very rare that an abuser is so well-funded. 